Hello, my name is Terence Lahew, and this is my review of The Murder of Mr. Wickham by Claudia Gray. This was a book that I was really excited to find. Uh, just glancing through the sh online shelves of uh, Audible, I came across The Murder of Mr. Wickham. Actually, you know, it was a ad on Goodreads that advertised it, and I'm I'm a sucker for a good Jane Austen continuation novel, and more importantly, I love a good mystery. Now, I've read only one of Claudia Gray's other books. She wrote, uh, I believe it's called Jedi Apprentice, one of the new Star Wars books, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I thought she did a great job. She also wrote a book uh, called Starcross, I think it was, another Star Wars book that was well-reviewed. I haven't read it, but from what I knew, I knew enough that I was confident that I was going to get a well-written book in The Murder of Mr. Wickham. Now, I know it sounds shocking, but it's about the murder of Mr. Wickham, who is probably the greatest villain that Jane Austen ever wrote. And so it makes perfect sense that he shows up in this story as the murder victim. Now, with a glut of continuation Austen, all focusing around the Darcys and Pemberley, Death Comes to Pemberley, A Phantom and Pemberley, these are fine books. But at the end of the day, what Claudia Gray did that was interesting was that she took all of the characters in the Austin verse, those main principal couples, or at least many of them, and dropped them in, not Pemberley, but Donwell Abbey, home to Mr. and Mrs. Knightley for this murder mystery. So they're all there for a dinner party, for a house party that's gonna last for a month. All the characters are still new, still fresh, still trying to get to know each other, having met for the first time in many cases. Some are relatives, some are just friends. Shocker, but Knightley and Darcy met at Oxford. Despite the contrivances to get the characters there, they're there and they're about to have like their first dinner. And who should walk in but Mr. Wickham? Who, of course, almost everyone sitting at the dining room table has a reason to want dead. Thus, we have our opening premise for a classic murder mystery scenario. Now, there are a couple of things that Claudia Gray did that I really enjoyed in this book. One of them being the introduction of a son of the Darcys, of Elizabeth and Fitzwilliam Darcy named Jonathan. Jonathan is even more formal than his father, even more, uh, we'll say, uptight. Now we come to learn through the story that part of that may do, be due to him being non-neurotypical. So being on the autistic spectrum of some kind or another, there are hints that way, they didn't have words for it so much back then, so it really doesn't get defined, but we see certain behavior that kind of lends towards that. We also have an introduction to the daughter of, I'd like to say the characters from North Granger Abbey, to be honest. I've really only read Pride and Prejudice and Emma, so some of the extra characters was like, I think I remember where these people are from. And we get the daughter of those characters named Juliet. Now, Juliet and Jonathan, of course, they kind of solve the mystery once Wickham is dead. Interesting dynamics. The thing that I thought was really interesting in this book is that they have, how do I put it? When I read a Jane Austen novel, there's always a part of me that wonders how different are the characters really? Are they just shades of the same person? Well, once you get all of those individual people in the same room, Claudia Gray does a really good job of making sure that each of that ensemble has a unique and distinct voice, which to the extent that I've read Austen's works, I can see being followed from the original novels they came from. She also gives each of them their own character arc to go through, which again, when you're working with a cast of 12 people is really impressive. The mystery itself isn't necessarily the most satisfying thing. There's really no question of if there's going to be a murder and if so, who's going to be murdered. The title kind of gives it away. It is again, one of those classic murder mystery scenarios. The difference being the context and the people, the characters in the story. It's fine, but it doesn't, without spoiling the book, it doesn't resolve in a way that is unexpected. It has the classic red herrings and misdirections and twists, but all of them just feel kind of so-so. There's a degree to which it feels like the murder mystery itself is restrained by the conventions of the age, 
Claudia Gray does an amazing job maintaining that Regency period um, artistic style and mimicking Jane Austen in a rather good way. While she might not hit the same high notes that Austen does, she does a good job of providing an overall satisfying story. Is it a great murder mystery? No, not really. If you want a compelling murder mystery, read any other murder mystery. But if you really want a interesting story that's a little different, if you're a fan of Jane Austen's works and you want to see a, a what if of those characters in that kind of situation, I think that especially for Mr. and Mrs. Knightley, the Emma characters, is a more interesting continuation than I've ever seen before. Uh, so that's my general thoughts and review. I hope that you get a chance to read it. If you have read it, drop a comment below and let me know what you thought of the book and follow, rate, review, whatever the stuff that you do on YouTube is. And I'll see you in the next page.